Another place that summer day was drifting by. Your daydreams were chasing each other. No sticking around long enough to become a firm plan. But you didn't really mind that right now. A tapping worked its way to, in, into those dreams. Focusing more, you realized it was coming from your window. A grin popped on your face as though it had been waiting all day for this moment. Heading to the window, you could see Cove outside. His habit of climbing his way was truly a Coveism. He'd rather scale your house than wait the comfortable extra minutes for you to come down. You stood aside to give him space. You held a hand out to him. Hand. You offered Cove a hand to help him. Once he was mostly inside, he took it to help steady the last bit of his entrance. Though considering how times he had done this, he'd hardly needed the help. Hey, hey Yui. Hey to you. You think my moms would invest in some bigger windows? Cove laughed at that and took one last look at his exclusive entrance. He hummed with a teasing look on his face. It'd make my life easier, that's for sure. Cove's voice came out quietly, with a strangely pleased smile on his face. Did something happen? Cove opened his mouth to answer, only to have your phone ring and cut him off. You both turned to where it rested, a little while up on your bed. It was still face down, so you couldn't tell who was calling. I bet it's gonna be Lee. It's Lee, I bet. Your attention showed back to Cove. He smiled at you awkwardly. Don't worry about it. Go check. It could be important. I'll wait. Thanks. You shuffled forward and scooped the little noisemaker into your hand. You flipped it over and checked the caller ID. It's Miranda. Oh, you should answer it. I want to say hi, too. With a nod, you accepted the call and sent the speaker. Hi, Miranda. Hi. There's something off about her tone. Cove met your gaze, and you saw the same confusion in his expression. Oh, no. What happened to my girl, Ma Miranda? Have you heard from Terry? Or did you hear about her from Cove? Huh? No, she hasn't called me, but Cove is with me right now. Hey. Oh, hi, Cove. Is that what you're going to say? He shook his head no before realizing what it wasn't it wasn't a good answer when one person couldn't actually see it. No. Terry hasn't called me today either. Is something wrong? At that, Miranda couldn't hold herself together any longer. The muffled sobs from the other line side of the line were unmistakable. What happened with Terry? Terry doesn't like me anymore if she ever did. Oh no, what happened? Did you two get into a fight? What? That that doesn't sound right. You're probably your best friend out of all of us. Yeah, why do you think that? She sniffled. There was a pause, and as you could hear, shift the phone to her other hand. Terry was here the other night watching movies with me. We were up super late. She realized her parents probably went to bed, so they couldn't pick her up. My mom and dad were definitely asleep then. Dad works early. I tried telling her it was okay to just spend the night, and she could text her parents what happened, but Terry didn't really want to. You glanced at Cove. He looked equally unsure as you about where the story was going. It didn't sound like a friendship ending situation. I suggested things to make it easier if she was nervous, like she could sleep by herself in my room while I stayed somewhere else. Yeah. And I said that we didn't have to sleep at all. We could have just kept watching movies until one of our parents woke up. I wouldn't have minded. I know not everyone can do sleepovers, but Terry wouldn't even tell me what was really wrong or what I could do to help. I thought we could tell each other anything. I guess that was wrong. Did she stay in the end? No. We got too loud in the kitchen my dad woke up. He offered to drive her home when he heard what was wrong. She texted me apologizing for my dad having to do that when you need rest, but that was it. She isn't talking to me anymore. You could hear every bit of the tears and heartbreak in Miranda's voice. This continued to be a shock for your neighbor, but Cove recovered and spoke gently. I'm really sorry. I mean... There's no way Terry wanted to make you feel this bad, or that she's just done with your friendship because of this. Miranda sniffing continued. You hope she had plenty of tissues handy. It'll be okay. I hope Terry's alright. It's really weird that she reacted like that. It's not a big deal, honestly. You weren't sure what to say. Uh, it's really weird that she reacted like that. You couldn't wrap your mind around it. It seems so unlike Terry, and maybe that's why it was bothering Miranda so much. Miranda's voice sounded a little more collected after finishing her story, but you knew that the crying was far from being done. I thought that she had been reached out to one of you by now. Maybe she's not talking to anyone? Yeah. Sorry for bothering you and Cove about this. Hey, we're here for you. Right. You can tell us things. Thank you. Her shaking voice finally conveyed a little optimism, or at least relief that she wasn't dealing with it entirely on her own. Is that all right? If you do hear from her or anything, could you let me know if she's all right? We can. Thanks. Let's talk later, okay? Bye. 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 It didn't really seem like an especially productive point to end the call, though you weren't sure where to go from there. Looking to Cove, his face seemed as lost as yours. No alternative, you hung up and put your phone back on your bed. Cove crossed his arms, a frown crossing his face. He began to pace the length of your room, clearly trying to put the pieces together in his head in a way that made sense. 
You were worried? You felt pretty confident that about this thing working out. Well, it sounded like trouble to you. You weren't sure how to react. You were worried. Biting the inside of your cheek, you stared at the ground. Hearing Miranda so distraught like that was not easy. What about Terry? The uncertainty was tearing you up. Cove's voice managed to draw, drag you back to some grounding. He stopped pacing, but he still saw perturbed uh, per -per -per look on his face. I can't fucking read! Yeah, I'm worried about her too. You two bounced up and moved to his side, reading to act on whatever plan you two could come up with. Cove started with the easiest thing. He pulled out his phone and called Terry. Cove let it ring and ring and ring. Terry didn't answer. There wasn't even an option to leave a voice message. Your shoulders slumped, and Cove looked even more troubled. If that was possible, he turned to you as if it was for some lifeline. Could you try calling? I'm gonna send a text just like, hey, I was just trying to reach you, call me or something. Yeah. You took up your phone once more. Unfortunately, after another set of innumerable rings, the line went dead. No answer, no voicemail. Hanging up, you saw Cove visibly deflate. He rubbed his arms, eyes distant, openly struggling with the whole affair. I don't like this at all. They're fighting. We barely know anything, and we're supposed to just wait and see? Despite it only being a minute since he texted Terry, Cove checked his phone again. He was desperate for progress, for something, and he frowned as he watched him. You need to try and relax. You're making me anxious. There's no way Terry has answered you. They're gonna get over it, you know. You stayed silent. You're tr you need to try and relax. Cove stared hard at the screen, as though he wasn't trying to will a new message to appear. As your words sank in, his gaze slid over to you. Just a little bit? Come on, you're working yourself up. Closing his eyes, you took a deep breath and released it slowly. It wasn't much, but you could see him ease up slightly. Yeah, you're probably right. Cove was still gripping his phone with both hands, as though it might fly away if you let it go. He looked to you with almost painful e uh, earnestness. Sorry. Should we... Well. What do we even say if we do hear from one of them? His pacing resumed as he attempted to answer his own question. Maybe we should tell them to talk to each other instead of us, maybe? We should find out Terry's side of the story. We should just comfort Miranda and let it and let it up with Terry. I don't know. We should only tell them to work it out between themselves, that's it. I wonder why you always have to come up with things. You didn't say anything. We should find out Terry's side of the story. Nothing could be done until you knew what she yet thought of this. That much was certain. Cove nods slightly in, in agreement. For several minutes, you both remained there in silence, drowning in your thoughts. Eventually, Cove turned around. <sighs> I'm gonna text Terry that we already know what's going on. Maybe she'll have an easier time talking to us because she won't have to pretend or explain. Yeah, that might be the only way to get her attention. You can't do that. Miranda didn't say that it was alright to admit she talked to us. You felt way too overwhelmed to know what to say next. I think you're pushing way too much. That's not a good idea, Cove. Not at all. Why are you so fixated on this? You felt way too overwhelmed to know what to say next. Upset your voice got caught in your throat as your thoughts were pulled into too many directions. Cove took your silence as a go-ahead. Cove's fingers worked furiously, yet carefully. He was giving his full attention to his words. You settled up next to him and looked, trying to watch what he was writing. Cove rapidly typed out, Hey, you and I really want to talk to you. Miranda told us what happened. Please reply back. And sent. It was done. Well, let's have to see what happens now. Quietly, he felt nervous. I wish you weren't so concerned with everyone else's feelings but mine. It'll definitely be alright, Cove. Things are okay. You hopefully think she gets back to us pretty soon. Why couldn't you just left it alone? Great. Can we do something else now? You're being dramatic. Uh, quietly you felt nervous. You wondered how Terry would react. A wave of nausea hit you like a ton of bricks. Finally seemed to dawn on him what his words had been doing to you. All the anger and frustration crumbled away, leaving a look of contrition in its place. He put his phone away. He made an effort to smile, but it was meager and did nothing to conceal the sadness in his eyes. I'm sorry. I never know what to do with this kind of thing. Maybe we should just forget about it? You smiled just a little bit. Finally, that sounds good to me. I'd like to be alone for a while, could you leave? He simply nodded back. He smiled just a little bit. Even the slight lessening of tension between you and Cove was working. Wonders on your shaking heart. The last thing any of you needed was more division among your friends. A silence stretched on in what felt like hours, but it likely wasn't that long before there was a knock on your bedroom door and Mom peeked in. Just wanted to check in on you. Oh, Cove, when did you get here? When she saw your morose expression, she opened the door all the way and the questions was dropped. Ma was standing there as well. She slipped past her wife to come inside your space. Everything okay? What's with the long faces? Are you both okay? You tried to nod, but it was no, no use. Your voice cracked, despite your best effort to not let it get to you no more. You couldn't even lift your eyes off the floor, as though the weight of your worry was dragging your head down. Miranda and Terry had a big fight, and none of us can get a hold of Terry. Your parents exchanged a meaningful look, though its meaning was lost on you. I am so sorry. 
Let's see. Is there anything we can do to help? Out of the corner of your eye, you saw Cove rub his arm awkwardly, unable to add anything. No, we're just waiting to see if Terry calls or texts or if Miranda does. Well, we can at least help you take your mind off of things while you're waiting. Yeah. Another great idea, Lonnie. We can get the whole gang together for some quality time. Mom gave you a soft smile and added, This will be good, especially since it might help make up for what happened at the farmer's market. Yes, it'll be wonderful. I'll go see what Liz is up to right now. Excited, she fluttered a few steps away and then smiled. She pivoted on her heels and raised a single finger, flashing a big smile at Cove. It's no trouble. And of course, Cliff will be welcome too. Knowing your family was always there for you, that couldn't be underestimated. In fact, it meant everything to you that your moms cared so much. I really appreciate this, thank you. Yeah, thanks, that's so nice of you. You're welcome. Don't sweat it, no, not so kiddos. Leave things to us. Just relax and we'll call you when it's all together. You nodded in your mom's dispersed for now, springing into action for their impromptu get-together. You flopped down onto your bed, feeling like you could sink into it and disappear. Cove, meanwhile, took a spot on a chair off to the side. He sighed at the same time, and Cove's mouth pulled into a bent smile at that. He gave his phone another quick check, and his eyebrows furrowed. Still nothing? <sighs> yep, this is crap, huh? Yep. Cove chewed the inside of his cheek as if to mimic the stress that was clearly eating at Hilling. Cove, what's wrong? What's really wrong? One disagreement doesn't make you act like this. That got a pointed pause in his movement. Cove was carefully trying to point his thoughts together. He spoke in a fragile voice. When people you care about, when they're unhappy with each other, there's nothing you can do. At least you're in a fight yourself. You have some responsibilities, some control over it all. I wish... So... I wish it didn't have to happen, but that is impossible, so... Oh well, I guess. The attempt at giving a nonchalant shrug at the end was pitiful. Yeah, it makes me feel horrible too. True, but you're right that it can't be helped. It's whatever, other people can do whatever they want, right? You stayed silent. Yeah, it makes me feel horrible too. In your lap, your hands momentarily curled into fists. This kind of powerlessness, it wore you down. You looked to Cove and were reassured by his understanding nod. There's a question that you have to ask. Is it because of what happened with your parents? Cove ran a hand through his hair, a strained smile spreading across his lips. For him, the pain struck close to his heart. Just as quickly as it come, his smile had gone, lost amidst his faraway gaze. Yeah, you got it. It's, it's like my parents. Despite knowing him for many years, Cove had never spoken of the years before he moved to Sunset Bird, before his parents separated in any detail. He whispered his thoughts distantly, almost unconcerned with whether you could hear them or not. That's... They used to fight all the time. I think they got along when I was a baby. But they had to have wanted to be with each other at some point, but when I was old enough to remember anything, it was already bad. There was always something wrong, and I could never help. I just wanted them to be happy. You tried to imagine your mom's breaking up, and the very idea scared you. But Cove had endured that for real. I'm sorry. Ely. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Despite that revelation, Cove gazed reassuringly at you. It's not like that anymore. Things are so different now. I don't really, really think about it anymore. Again, the sorrow reassured itself. When he continued, you could barely hear him. Though I guess it's pretty obvious I haven't forgotten either. You tried to smile for him. You crossed the room and took his hand. You went over and placed a hand on his shoulder. You hugged him. Hugs! You crossed the room, picking up a little bit of speed, and Cove's eyes widened. You shot out of the chair and stood waiting for you with a non plus look. When you collided into him, wrapping your arms around his middle and knocking the air out of his lungs, all mystery was gone. Cove squeaked. Oh. He returned the gesture longingly. Aww, Cove, my baby. Exhaling, you pressed your cheek into the warmth of his chest. The tension stuck inside you released like a river flow into the ocean that was Cove. The firmness of his hug told you Cove didn't plan on letting go anytime sooner. You both need the comfort and closeness for just a little bit longer. When he finally did, the two of you took a seat again. This time, side by side on your bed. Bye. Today was a lot, huh? Yeah, it was. You sat there contently, you leaned against him. Lean. Resting the side of your head on his shoulder, you glanced up at his face. Cove watched you affectionately. In that gentle case, he finally felt like everything was going to be okay. No matter what happens, we can make it work. His mouth pulled into a bent smile like at that. You chuckled, resting your head comfortably back onto his shoulder. Me too. I think so too. And for a while, you stayed like that. A comfortable quiet fell between you and the sun fell with it. Dorm and calm ended when Cove gasped sharply. 
He spun half expectantly to find him nursing an injury, but instead found them start and standing straight ahead. What? Oh my god. I think my phone just vibrated. Check it out. Right. He patted his pockets, fumbling in his panic, and yanked the phone out. The force of the action, the action nearly catapulted the device out of his grip entirely, but he caught it just in time. His eyes honed in on the screen. It's Terry, thank god, she said she's sorry. He looked back to you, eyes wide as his nerves started to fray once more. Chloe. What should I say? I don't know. Give it a second I need to think. Tell her to call us. Ask her what's going on. Ask her ask if she's talking to Miranda. He clammed up. Uh, ask if she's talking to Miranda. Co's phone buzzed nearly as soon as the message was sent. Ah, oh, it's Terry again. She's talking to us. She's asked about what a man Miranda said, but wait. He leaned in, watching the conversation unfold on Cove's screen. Right. She's gonna actually call. Cove held his breath as he waited. Though he was good with people, he'd never been at ease at managing conflict. His phone rang out. Cove jammed the answer button. He switched the phone in speaker mode, allowing you to participate in the conversation. But despite his immediate reaction, his voice lacked the same resolve when he spoke. Hey. It was tentative. A white flag fluttering in the wind. Yui's here, too. Hi, we've been worried about you. Hey. Terry's voice was very recognizable without her usual quick patter and energy. Are you okay? I don't know. Probably not. Cove tensed, his free hand coiling into an anxious fist. Can you talk to us about what happened? Don't you know already? Miranda explained some of it, but it doesn't make sense to us. You heard Terry sigh over the phone as she unburdened herself. Pretty much. I was at Randy's house. We decided to watch some movies. She's super... He super liked that I'd never seen before. Turns out there's a lot of those. We watched one, then another, and another. We were having so much fun. Each time one finished, she had another one to share with me. I didn't really think much about the time. I only wanted to say yes to Randy and watch your movies. She spoke wistfully, but her words were full of affection. It was Randy, you know? I, was think I wasn't thinking about my schedule or what time it was. I get it. You are gay for her. Then I finally saw the time and oh no, it was way too late. I already knew I couldn't stay. I was so stressed out, I couldn't couldn't deal with it. Miranda wanted to help. She couldn't. She kept coming up with ways to make it better and trying to figure out why I was so upset and stuff. I was trying to answer her questions, but there were so many. But I couldn't really answer all of them. I didn't even know why some of her ideas didn't work with me. It made my head ache. I still had the first problem in Randy there, trying to help, blasting all these questions and suggestions at me faster than I couldn't even think. She gulped audibly, sniffing. I got frustrated and told her to just leave me alone, but then she wanted to talk about why I wanted that. And then we started having a fight in the kitchen. It woke Randy's dad up. We told him about how I wanted to go home, but my parents couldn't get me, so Mr. Eckert offered to, offered to do it. That's so nice of him. Terry groaned. I know. I accept it because I definitely couldn't stay then, not after throwing a racket and turning it into a big deal. But I feel awful and embarrassed. Why did I yell at Randy and hurt her feelings? And it made her dad lose sleep by waking him up and having to drive me home. What do I say after that? I have no idea. I don't know where to start. And I don't know what to make it worse by saying the wrong thing and fighting again. Uh. So, I'm not talking. Does she, like, have, like, a curfew or something like that? Or does she, like, get really, like, anxious? Either way, that's kind of odd. Terry, Randy isn't mad that you didn't want to stay or that you fought. She just wants to feel like you can talk to her. I mean, you can say whatever you want. She'll listen. Not talking to her at all is pretty much the only wrong way to go about it. Terry lamented mournfully on the other end of the line. But he had a point. Unless she faced Miranda again, there would be no resolution. He looked at Cove hunched over the phone, staring pensively into it and searched for a solution. This couldn't be solved with another key party missing, but what if he brought them in? Your phone was still free. He's just calling up Miranda now. He rung Miranda up without saying a word. What if we called Miranda? That way you could talk to her, but wouldn't have to do it alone. Cove brightened up. The concern frow on his brow, which had taken root when Miranda first called East. Well... That could work. Terry, are you up for it? She made a noise that wasn't a word, but nevertheless conveyed her hesitation and worry. But she brought it to a close with a decisive exhalation, as if pushing all negative thoughts from her body. Alright, I'll do it. Cove nodded. Now that you've received approval from everyone, you pulled out your phone and called Miranda. He sent the speaker and waited for her to pick up. Luckily, she did. Hi. Hi, Yui. Her voice was still distant, as if her thoughts were elsewhere, but it was loud enough for, uh, for your needs. Hi, you're on speaker. Terry's on speaker, too, on Cove's phone. Oh. She paused while she digested this information. You watched the phone screen, hoping that she wouldn't hang up as a result. Really? Yep, it's really me. Can you hear my voice all the way from your house to theirs and then mine? I can. You and Cove exchanged looks waiting for the wall between them to break, and wondering uh, who would be the one to do it. 
As Kawhi dragged on, you caught Cove chewing his cheek. He must have weighed on, up on the same question as you, whether to encourage the conversation along or leave Miranda and Terry to resolve it to it themselves. The answer came in the form of one sniff, followed by another from Cove's phone. Sorry. I hope you still like me. Uh you were the one asking me if you didn't like me. Her tone was defensive, no doubt a result from her wounds from last night still being raw. What? No way! Everyone likes Randy! You're wonderful! Your eyes met Cove's. His, his phone was tilted towards you, capturing the call indirectly. You moved your phone closer to his, hoping that the signal was strong enough to convey every new sense of tone. Cove did, likewise, bringing up his cell phone right next to yours, even bumping against it as he shifted his grip. I didn't know what to say. That's the only reason I wouldn't talk to you. If I had known the answer, I would have told you right away. Miranda murmured on the other end of the line. You didn't want to stay. Anything I, I tried to do bothered you, and you could have told me you didn't know. Yeah, I think... I was angry at myself. I did a dumb thing, and I didn't want help with it. I wanted to be mad and just deal with it myself. It made me keep doing dumb things. Oh. When she spoke again, her voice was quiet, as tender her vulnerable as her words were. I'm sorry. Staying up late watching stuff was all my fault. I had to find a way to fix it. That's what I thought anyway, but I should have given you space. I'm sorry for being so pushy and sensitive. Hardly. Miranda Eckert having a flaw. I never heard such of a crazy thing. Miranda let out a ghost of a giggle. Uh, Cove cleared his throat. Uh, maybe you should call each other now? Sorry. Sure. Can't do. Thanks for giving me the kick in the butt to do this already. Randy Mandy, I'm gonna give you a call right now. Bye, you Ian Cove. She hung up after squeezing in another quick bye, though not giving you or Cove room to respond in kind. Miranda laughed, the noise tinkling gently like wind chimes in a summer breeze. You're really nice. Thank you for listening and helping. I'm gonna hang up now so I can answer Terry's call. Bye. Bye and good luck. Bye, talk to you soon. Miranda hung up and still mm, chuckling softly as your call ended. The room felt emptier without the other voices in it. Cove expelled a sigh that crashed through the newly fallen silence. He dropped his arms to his side, letting his, his head hang down like a puppet at rest. <sighs> Thank God. They shouldn't have involved us in that. I'm so relieved it's okay. You were simply happy your friends had made up. The day's events had drained you. You were condemned now that Cove seemed at ease again. Cove scratched at his face, his expression cloudy. I think I need to find better ways for dealing with conflict because that was awful. We could all probably do better at that. I think he did okay given the circumstances. Yeah, I think that would help. He didn't comment. Yeah, we could all probably do better after that. Cove meekly smiled as he rubbed out his eyes, really just creeping over him and mumbled his next words. We can talk about another day. Conflict resolution methods? Huh? Oh, no, forget it. Your eyebrows rose and then a light bulb went off in your head. Before Miranda called, did you say there was something you wanted to say? Ko's original visit had been thrown off so kilter that it was struggle to wind your memory back to when he had first turned up. Now you did, though you remembered that he had been perky when he arrived this afternoon. Was it good news? Ko brushed his hands against his new folded arm shyly. Well, maybe. I'm not exactly sure it counts as news or even good. It just is what it is. I'm happy about it, though. You're curious, but you didn't want to push Ko if you didn't want to speak about it. You don't have to say anything, but if it makes you feel good, I think it is good news. Cove chuckled awkwardly, a hand creeping up to ruffle the hair on the back of his head. I, uh... It's fine if you want to hear. I can tell you. He shifted on his feet, as if a different posture might give him the support he needed for the conversation. I didn't want to make it a big deal, but I kind of, well, not kind of, I just know what my sexuality is now. Oh? Please make it at least a tiny bit straight so you can be with me. Oh! Real subject change, huh? He chuckled. True. It was unexpected, but you were excited what Cove had to come to understand himself more, and gave what he wanted to share what, with that with you. That's great, tell me more. Cove drew a breath, straightening up. I'm demisexual, so you know, most of the time, I don't really have those kinds of feelings. Physical stuffs and ones. <gasps> He's just like me! He's demisexual, just like me! <gasps> I'm so happy! It's only in some situations when I'm already really emotionally and romantically connected to someone that I start to ev ever think about anything sexual and it's only with them. Cove is demisexual, let's go! And I'm panoramantic, because I've never had a preference for a specific gender or anything, so yeah. <gasps> and we still have a chance for him, let's go! It's kind of like, just like me! I mean, I'm bi-romantic instead of panoramantic, but still, we're both demisexual! Ah! I'm so happy! That makes sense. Cove looked down at the floor. Being so open and direct about, about a matter that personal, which you were sure he'd spent a long time trying to figure out, seemed to be kind of weird for him. Despite that, there's a small and proud smile on his face. 
and when he looked up again, his gaze was steadfast. All this talk of code sexuality made you reflect about your own. Your feelings on yours haven't wavered. Your view had evolved since you were younger. Your feelings on yours haven't wavered. Cove had known yours for now. It was heartwarming that he had reached a point where he had felt similarly capable of discussing on his own. He felt even closer. You could tell that Cove felt like it had been an emotionally draining day, and that it had now come to a close, everything wrapped up neatly with a bow on top. You had some good talks with your friends and with each other. A lot had been brought into the light, and you'd come out if not only knowing each other better, but yourself too. But there was still something that Cove didn't know, something that had been gnawed at many times over the years. You'd never told Cove about how you first met his dad. You'd always held it back from him, unsure of how he would take the revelation. His dad seemed to have done the same, as Cove didn't seem to have heard it from Mr. Holden either. He sighed that the secret had hung over you for long enough. Meet me, Tom, someday, but not today. I feel like it didn't matter anymore. There was no need to break up old drama. It wasn't as though Mr. Holden had kept you on his payroll to be his friends with his son. It was a strange action, probably out of desperation, taken years ago. At this point, you thought you might simply keep that entire event in the past where it belonged. You felt some relief at deciding it wasn't your responsibility to keep carrying. Hey. We should probably head downstairs soon, if your moms are still wanting everyone to get together. Yeah, that's right. With a renewed spring in your step, you led them out of the way to your room. You got downstairs to find the others already assembled and waiting. Hi. Hello. Hey. Good to see you both. Hi, here we were, trying to corral everyone into a group, but the two of you were already upstairs this whole time. Hey, Dad, we had some stuff to talk about. Yeah. But we made it, so what's the plan? Hmm, how about cards? There's a murmur of interest from the others. You were keen to play, that was five feet. You played along with the others, you really didn't want to play cards. You were keen to play. It was very nearly, but not quite unanimous. Mr. Holden demurred. Nah. I think I'll sit this one out. Where's the fun in that? Join in! Yes, and I know there's a lot of people, but we can make it work. Mr. Holden shrunk in into himself, embarrassed by their attention. Dad, you love playing cards. We do it at our house all the time. Yeah, remember the time I played over there? There were those serious games. We made bets with real money and everything. Dad? Mr. Holden broke under the combined force of everyone's attention. Cove and Yui, you're adults now. You deserve to know the truth. I used to throw the card games so you could win. I put up a good fight, but I always made sure to lose a lot more rounds than I won. <gasps> Betrayal! You toyed with the end of his ponytail, clearly distressed at revealing the spit of info. You did have a history of bad surprises, so that may have been why. I know people want to be taken seriously and fake wins don't mean as much, so I couldn't help myself. It's so much better when everyone else got the chance to be victorious. Kyra knew and went along with it. Cove laughed in disbelief that this was the last thing his dad stressed about, hiding after the other stunts he's pulled over the years. So what? Lots of parents do that. I hadn't guessed it, so sure. Looking through, it makes sense. Hmm. That's right. What's the big deal, Cliff? You can finally take the kid gloves off and give them a run for their money. Mr. Holden smiled coyly, his gaze lowering. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why? He waved his hand expansively, the moments fluid and vague. It's just, actually, I am something of a card shark. I used to make lots of fast cash off games. Casual players don't have a shot unless it's a game of pure luck. Cove's jaw hung open, his wide eyes fixed on his father. Really? There's a touch of amazement, even admiration nestled among the shock. The other members of the Yan Pasti family exchanged looks, ranging from Liz's disbelief to Mom's intrigue, with Ma somewhere in the middle between the two. You can't simply make a claim like that and expect us to go along with it. Let's see, back it up, Shark Man. Mr. Holm gave her a crooked smile, his demureness quickly being replaced with the confidence of someone very skilled or very misguided. <laughs> sure about that? Definitely. We've got to see this so-called non-casual player in action. Well, I might be able, though who knows. Maybe I've gotten rusty. His coyness continued to rile the gang up, and he was getting the, a kick out of it now. Please? Alright. I can just off the old tricks. Great! Cove beamed at his father while Mom clapped Mr. Col Holden on the back. Liz darted off to get a deck of cards while the rest of you settled in for the game. Hands were dealt. Mr. Holden wasted no time provide, proving his words true, wiping the floor with all of you. He played several rounds, even switching games, but none of them were a match for him. That was how the alliance came to be forged. The rest of you joined forces against Mr. Holden, only just to try increasing the odds of beating him. <laughs> God, there reminds me of like this one time. This was like back in like high school. I was playing Uno with uh, CC and Moon, and the two of them decided to like team up against me because it's funny to make fun of me. Plus, like with them being like underclassmen and me being an upperclassman, it was funny to make fun of the upperclassmen. 
Oh, God, now I miss high school again. With your combined efforts, you pulled out a few victories, yet it was still a challenge. He was clearly a professional. If these were his skills now, Rusty would be disused. You couldn't even imagine what a deadly opponent he had been in the past. Despite that, you still had fun. Working cooperatively actually fostered a sense of commemorative co camaraderie. I can't fucking read! With the others, Mr. Holden didn't appear phased by the strategy. He actually wondered whether the increased challenge made it more interesting for him. You spent the rest of the afternoon together with your family and the Holdens having fun. It was an interesting evening for sure, with many discoveries for everyone. It was freeing, and yet simultaneously, you felt more tied together than you had been before. Sun beamed in through your window, warming your skin as you lay comfortably on your bed. With your arm hovering in the air, you held your phone above your face, squinting against the sun to read the latest text Cove had sent through. He was out with the group he volunteered with, Orca, doing some kind of activity. They had been at it since early that morning, though he had been keeping you updated by messenger. Latest one explained how he just finished cleaning up the beach, and was now heading over to Manus Tall on the shopping street to sell tickets for a fundraising dinner. Before then, he wanted to call. He didn't mind that, and replied, saying as much. As you waited for it to come in, you let out a big breath, thinking of the formal dinner that Orca organized. Being a completely fundraising-focused event for large donors, it was crucial for the organization's project for the year to come. That's why Cove had been so busy lately. All he had heard about it so far was that it was prim and proper occasion, with speeches and everything. And then a notification popped up. Incoming call. You picked up immediately. Hi. Sorry. I don't have a lot of time to talk, but this was my chance, so you know. It sounds like you're doing a good job. Are you, are you sure you're getting enough rest? I hope you can pull yourself away from your beloved beach. What a mature, responsible boy you are. I wish you were here with me instead. Uh... Are you sure you're getting enough rest? I wouldn't want to see you crash and burn at, after all the hard work you're doing. Yeah, I'm taking breaks. I mean... Do you want to come by to see me? At the booth, I mean? Sure, why not? Okay, cool. I'll see you soon. It's just down on the shopping street. You'll see it. Alright, bye. See you. After the temporary goodbyes, you took your phone away and pushed yourself from your bed. Heading downstairs, you found Ma lounging in the living room, seated on the couch with her legs tucked up and magazine in her lap. She looked up at the sound of your footsteps, giving you a smile. Hey, sweetie, what are you up to? Cove just finished his first Orco activity. He's going to the shopping street to sell tickets for the fundraising dinner. I'm going to meet him there. That's fantastic. She nodded happily, and then her face fell a little as she put her magazine to the side. I'm so sad your mom and I can't make it to the dinner that night. She seemed honestly disappointed, but her face brightened again when she looked at you next. You'll be going, right? I can buy you the ticket for you if you don't have enough. What's the price? Thanks, but Cove hasn't mentioned how much it is. I'll check it out when I'm there. Okie dokie. Let me know how it goes. You greet the knob, walking backwards towards the door. Thanks, sweetie. Have a good walk, and tell Cove I said hello. I will. Bye, Mom. Strolling out of the front door, you shut it behind you and let out a deep breath. You had known that the event was coming up and that you'd most likely be going to support Cove, but you hadn't thought about it too much before now. With a small nod to yourself about everything you had, you'd have to do, you began to walk through the shopping street. It didn't take long until you spotted Cove's bright seafoam hair behind a counter and the barrier advertising the fundraising event. You caught your eyes, you headed over and stood from his seat with a smile, pleased to see you arrive. Raising a hand from the clipboard he held, he gave you a wide wave and greeting, inviting you to approach the counter. You came right up to the front of the booth, inspecting the little plush sea animals that decorated it, before turning your smile on Cove. Yui! Hey, good to see you! Hey, you made it! Have you settled in everything? He nodded, taking a survey of the simple booth. <sighs> I appreciate getting to take a seat for a while. The beach was great, but it's nice to be off my feet for five seconds. He chuckled. You were glad to see that despite all the work he'd been doing, he was in high spirits. He seemed to really be enjoying working with the charity. So how much were the tickets for this event? He hesitated for a moment, rubbing at the back of his neck awkwardly. They're $150. I only found out today. That makes sense. That's so high. That's pretty low for a formal fundraising dinner. That's so high. Are all the tickets the same price? And yep, they are. Cove shrugged, glancing down at his clipboard as he answered. That's... It's definitely not something I would normally be at, but it seems to fit the type of people who are at that kind of thing. Most people that have bought tickets wrote a check for it. I've never written a check for anything before. Neither have I. Not to lie. I have written some checks before, but I don't think I've I've written uh, one in like a while. Besides to like get my passport. You laughed briefly and shook your head at him. Upon seeing the look on your face, he trailed off and cleared his throat softly. 
A couple of people did have cash though, but yeah, that's the answer to your question. Don't worry about it. Um, still, I'd really like for you to be there. I'll get you a ticket so you won't have to worry about that. You just have to come. You will? Who remembers good to bring a guest? No, we only get entry for ourselves, and it's only people who volunteer a certain, certain number of hours or if they're actually part of the team running it. So basically, I'm gonna buy for you. You're shocked by that. It was a thoughtful of him to offer. No way, I'll get my own ticket. Thank you. I can't let you do that. It's too expensive to be a gift. I'll make it up to you somehow. I can't let you do that. Yeah, that's... Co, please. I can't. Come on, please let me get it for you. You're still supposed to be my guest. I want to donate anyway. This is a chance to do it. Alright, if you're sure. I'll still rather buy my own. Can we split at least the cost? Uh, alright, if you're sure. He nodded. A smile slowly breaking across his face at your acceptance. What matters to me is that you're here. He glanced over his shoulder quickly before turning back to you, his lips and tilting mischievously at the corners. Well, I'm not supposed to, but if you want, you can step behind the counter and keep me company while I sell tickets. He burst out laughing. Heck yeah, you're such a troublemaker even when doing volunteer work. He nodded and grinned at him. Uh, heck yeah! You left at your enthusiasm as you round the table and took the extra seat beside him. Aww, I fucking love them. They're so cute. The afternoon passed in a blur, with you and Cove laughing and chatting in between ticket sales. As the time drifted on, the, the sun sank lower in the sky. 6 p.m. finally rolled around. Hey, that's what time it is right now! I mean, it's 6.10, but still, 6 p.m. And he helped him to get everything packed up to call it a day. As you headed back home together, you thought of the fundraising dinner and how close it was now. There's still plenty to do before the big night arrived. The days continued on in a normal flow, and before long, the night of the Orca fundraising dinner was upon you. It was early evening, and you were in your room getting ready as the minutes ticked closer and closer towards the time you needed to leave. You wanted some privacy, so you had to lock yourself away on your own. Liz was helping you pick an outfit. Cove was on speakerphone. Liz was helping you get ready while Cove was on speakerphone. Uh, this one. You're currently in the midst of picking out an outfit, which Liz was helping you with, while Cove gave his input from the phone. Of course, Cove couldn't see any of the items you and Liz were choosing between, but he was trying to help all the same. The event had strict guidelines, and you wouldn't be let in unless you were dressed to code. That meant having to find a truly professional outfit, but one that you were also happy with. You're happy to have the chance to dress fancy, you wanted to be practical about it, you weren't happy about having to dress up. I love dre uh, dressing fancy, so yeah. You smiled as you picked your way through items, your excitement shining bright. That's fine. You don't need to get too in your head thinking about the look, but you do need to hurry up and pick something. At this rate, you're going to have a better time picking out your outfit than at the party itself, but whatever you go with, it'll be great. Oh, aren't you helpful, Liz? Don't push me, Liz. Thanks for talking it through with me, Cove. I never thought I'd see the day when Cove Holden would encourage me to wear something formal. He laughed a little, you shook your head. This one. A quiet chuckle came from your phone, and you smiled at the sound. Yeah, this is really a once-in-a-lifetime event. Taking a deep breath to refocus yourself, you looked over the options one last time. It was time to decide on an outfit and quick. You chose a dress, you chose a button-down shirt and pants, you chose a flat and pants, a button-down shirt and skirt, a blouse and a skirt. Dress! Liz nodded in approval, clapping her hands together satisfied. Good. We're making some progress. Mm. That sounds like it'll be totally fine. I'm wearing just a shirt with buttons and slacks personally. Standing in front of your mirror, you quietly asserted your outfit. You thought about adding an accessory or two, you liked your outfit as it was. You can never go wrong with an accessory. You needed a little something extra to finish it all off. Rubbing through the rest of your wardrobe, you picked out what you need to complete your outfit. A necklace. Turning back to the mirror, you let Liz drape your best necklace around your neck and clasp it together at the back. Uh, oh, I can add in more. A bracelet. You slipped the bracelet around your wrist and made sure it was sitting there properly. Uh, a ring. You couldn't leave the house without slipping on that. Holding your hand up to the light, you quietly admired the way it, gl it glinted. Uh, a pair of earrings. You hurried to put on a pair of earrings to match your outfit, aware that time was running short. Uh, an anklet. You had to quickly remove your shoes to slip on the anklet before stepping back into them again. Uh, a shawl. Just in case it got cold during the evening, you need a shawl to drape over your shoulders. And that was everything. And with that, you decided to apply makeup. Yes, looks like she could put on makeup for you. You're ready to go. Usually I have, like, uh, I can do, like, my own makeup, but sometimes I need help with eyeliner, so I'm gonna have Liz do it for me. Leaning up in front of the mirror again, you spoke over your shoulder. You think you can help me out with some makeup for tonight? 
Absolutely, I'll show you everything I know. You're welcome for that. With that, Liz really got into gear. She worked definitely to apply all details without holding you up too long. All while keeping you informed on what was happening to your face. Oh? You're really going all in, aren't you? Of course. Finally, you're dressed. That'll all come together. Okay, just gotta change my shirt and then I'll be at the car. See you in a minute. When you looked at Liz again, she had a goofy smile pulling at her lips. You look very nice, Yui. Thank you. You twisted around your outfit excitedly. I do look good, don't I? Now you're talking like our moms. You blushed and smiled at the compliment. Uh, this one. Singing glance in the mirror, you knew the outfit you picked was the right choice. Liz wiped a pretend tear away from her finger, sniffling dramatically. Oh, precious Yui, you're really all grown up. It happened in the blink of an eye, even when I wasn't even looking. She chuckled to herself, nudging you towards the door. Time to get downstairs. Your special boy awaits. You carefully headed down the stairs and into the living room where your moms were waiting for your appearance. As you entered, they both stood from the couch and came over to smile broadly. You look so wonderful, Yui. Nice. And very mature, too. Mm -hmm. I know, right? They continued to coo and fuss over you until you managed to brush them off. Ma took Mom by the arms and held her close, the two of them admiring you proudly. You enjoyed the attention, thank you, sighed dramatically. I already got this from Liz. I wonder why they're making such a big deal. I already got this from Liz. I don't need it from you, too. You'll have to get used to it one day, Yui. You're the baby of the family forever, after all. Yeah, it's true. I I am. I'm pretty much the youngest like out of like most of my friends, so I get it. We hope you have so much fun tonight. Have fun. We won't wait up for you. Stay out as long as you need. You're old enough now. Hell yeah, I'm an adult! With the last wave goodbye, you left your family and approached the front door. It was time. Stepping out into the night, you closed the door behind you gently and looked out across the street. Cove was standing there in the street. His eyes met yours immediately as if, as if it had been watching your house for the moment you would come out. He smiled bashfully. Oh, my boy! It's my boy! Oh, he's so precious! Anyway, hey, I hope you're ready to do this. He took the chance to check over his outfit as he, as he walked off across to meet you. He looked you over as well, a subtle flush creeping over his face as he, cl as he quickly cleared his throat and averted his gaze. I, uh... I'm you... He seemed to be struggling to find something to say, rubbing at the exposed part of his arm awkwardly. Thank you for coming with me and for dressing really nicely for this. Your outfit, it's good. He's so fucking awkward. <laughs> I fucking love him. I... Better than good. Really great, I guess. Something else? Uh, so yeah. His gaze traveled downward to take in your full form, and he suddenly froze, his eyes winding at the very bottom of it. You are confused by his reaction. Was it your shoes, or... He gave you no answer, simply turning his a very red face away from you. You wish you knew what what had done it, but you could be grateful at least something about your luck had. Thank you. You felt shy over it? You look very nice, too. Damn, club, you so, you're so hot right now, you said flirtatiously. He shrugged. Um... Uh, you look a bit... Uh, you felt shy over it. It was one thing for your family to compliment the way you look, as they had been doing it all your life, but it felt nice to hear someone else say it for a change. Then, he shook his head, glanced back towards the garage, and throwing a thumb over his shoulder, spoke. Come on. We should probably get going. Wouldn't want to be late for, to such a grown-up event, right? Yeah, let's go. You headed over to Cove's car together, hopping in and strapping on all your seatbelts. You were on your way. The event was being held at a place you had never been to before. You brought up the location on your phone to help Cove navigate there. It took some time to find the right address, and once there, you were met with the task of finding a parking spot. Though you were on time, it seemed like everyone else had already shown up and claimed the spaces. Eventually, you found a suitable place before realizing that it required payment. Cove covered the amount, taking a ticket from the machine and leaving it on the dashboard of the car. Despite the small holdup, you managed to ultimately make it to the event and confirm you were on the guest list before being shown into the dining area. Cove whistled low as he looked around, taking in the extravagance of the room. Chandeliers hung uh, from the ceiling, and the entire place was decked out with beautiful oceanic displays. You were stunned yourself. It was extremely high class, even more so than you had already expected. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at the fish. <gasps> Look at the lights. It's so nice. This is the best looking event I've ever been to. It was way too frilly for me. It's overdone. Could be worse. You didn't comment. This is the best looking event I've ever been to. You left part in a wondrous smile as you took in the decorations and the guests and all dressed in, to the nines. Cove met your eyes with a similar look to his face. You got the impression that he felt the same way about it all. The sound of Cove's name being called out echoed over the den of the room. When you looked around, there were a couple of unfamiliar people coming your way. They headed over to greet Cove, giving you both a welcoming smile and hello. 
We're glad to see you can make it, Cove, especially after all the hard work you've done to make this night happen. Of course. I wasn't going to miss it. This must be Yui. Cove has mentioned you often. It's so nice to finally meet you. Yep, that's me. Yui and I, we've known each other for a long time, since we were just kids. That's wonderful. There's nothing like old friends. Yeah. Cove, we have to thank you for everything you've done for Orca. You're always welcome to join in on, on more activities when they come up. You too, Yui. If you ever decide it's something you're interested in, you nod your head in understanding, giving a small smile. Well, we better head off to greet the other guests. It was lovely sp speaking with you both. You all said your goodbyes, and they faded off into the crowd, leaving you and Cove to your own once more. Cove shrugged then, eyes darting around the place with an awkward look. So... I guess we should talk to more people. There isn't much else to do at an event like this. You found your way into groups of people who were standing around chatting while some light music played in the background. Servers with large silver trays were, were gliding between the guests, offering drinks and can canapes. Canopies? Canapes? I don't know what that word means. Cove approached various people as you wound your way through the guests. You managed broaching new conversations well. You enjoyed talking to so many different people, both guests and members of the organization alike, and found yourself enjoying the company. The sound of a microphone crackling came from the podium at the other end of the room. Someone who you assume must be the host of the evening was, was asking everyone to sit down in preparation for the meal and speeches. You and Cove looked for your table, finding it easily enough by the little name cards that were placed delicately besides the napkins. A few others joined you at the table, though they weren't anyone that you recognized. The host was still speaking as people were suddenly starting off the speeches by giving a welcome to everyone attending. She went on to provide some more information about Orca, which she supposed was for the guests who weren't a part of the organization and the purpose of the fundraiser tonight. Orca's goals, as she explained it, were to aid in the conservation and restoration of oceans and beaches. There were many people who had helped to make the group as successful as it was. When she read it out, a list of several volunteers who worked on making the event happen. Cubsy was one of the first ones to come up. It's just puffed up on pride at that. As she continued on to thank the large donors for the event, you checked over at Cove. He was still grinning happily to himself and tapping his fingers over the top of his knees, pretty pleased to have been mentioned by name. You laughed quietly at his reaction and rolled your eyes. You were excited for him. You tried to keep focused on the speech. You laughed quietly at his reaction. It was good to see all his hard work paying off, and but his goodness was also funny. He's so fucking cute. While the host continued speaking, multiple servers dressed in, the, in black were setting the first course of the menu in front of guests. One of the servers set down a plate in front of you, and you thanked him quietly, before looking over the dish with interest. You recognized the dish as a simple Caesar salad. The host quickly wrapped up the end of her speech, thanking everyone once more before inviting you all to begin your meal. Anyone who had included a special dietary note when signing up for the event received a vegan or vegetarian version, and there were also small baskets of bread set around the table. You ate both the salad and the bread, you ate just the salad, you just ate some of the bread, you didn't eat any of it. I ate both. Cove pulled down his salad before munching into a breadstick, quickly devouring it as well. I hope the next part comes out soon and it's bigger. You could hear him mumbling to himself as he reached over for another piece of bread. He glanced around the table and you followed him in line of sight with curiosity, knowing that everyone else was still eating the salad. Stomping his hand midair, he quickly pulled back and rested it on his lap without taking another breadstick after all. It was clear that he was starting to feel unsure of himself, and he looked a little out of place here. He folded his arms and turned away from them for you. Hey, did you like the salad? It was really good. It was too small. It was alright. It was pretty bad. You simply shrugged. It was really good. I can't wait to see what else they ha they serve. His gaze remained purposely tunneled on you, as if he was trying not to even think about what the rest of the table might be doing. You gave Cub a pat on the head. You made silly faces at the other guests while they weren't looking. You picked up a breadstick and gave it to Cub. You discreetly flipped the other guests off. You sat there, quietly feeling uncomfortable yourself. Uh, I attempted to flip the other guests off, but that'd be too mean. I can't do that to Cove. So I'm just gonna give him a pat on the hand. His lips tilted up into the corners, and he seemed touched by the reassurance. It wasn't much longer until the main courses were arriving, and the various chicken, steak, and veggie dishes were being served throughout the room. An array of stents wafted through the room, making your mouth water. You had chosen the chicken, you had chosen the steak, you went with the me vegan meal, you went with the vegetarian meal. Uh, steak. It was nice that you had been given the option of how you liked your steak cooked, and the meal went on the plate in front of you seemed perfectly to your taste. Cove had gone for the steak, and once he started to dig in, he was completely absorbed by his meal. You're gonna choke if you keep inhaling your food like that. You kicked him under the table teasingly, you flicked something at him while he was off guard, you focused on your own food. Uh, this one. You retorted without even looking at from the dish. 
Most of the people here can do CPR, so it'll be fun. You shook your head in amusement as you continued fervently eating at the same pace. Dinner eventually ended, and the last of all was dessert, a lemon sorbet that had been partially dyed blue. The mix of white with, bro with bold streaks of blue made the little scoop look like a ball of roaring ocean waves. The effect was very pretty, but the serving size was small. Perhaps it was the price to pay for artistry. He turned to cut up to find him pounding it a little at the size of it. Digging into dessert, it took him only a few bites to polish it off. Again, the other people around the table had barely begun eating. An unimpressed air settled over him as he sat back in his chair, sipping at his water unhappily. You should appreciate what you got. You laughed at his moping. You're such a big baby. We can get more dessert later. You cleared your throat. We can get more dessert later. He gave him an encouraging smile. He looked up at you sheepishly, embarrassed to have been caught sulking over such a thing. He fumbled for a defense. I mean... It was just really good, that's all. Now it's gone, but I'm okay. With a slight grin, he shrugged to show that he was really fine. Would you like a bite of mine? Do you want my dessert? Alright, Cub. Would you like a bite of mine? You scooped up a spoonful of your sorbet and offered it to him, holding your hand beneath it to avoid any drips. His eyes widened as he eyed the dessert hungrily, surprised by the offer. Recovering quickly, he leaned forward over the table, lifting out of the chair a little as he ate the treat from your spoon. As he sat back, coming happily with his mouth full, you couldn't help but smile at the sight. Ko swallowed the faux ocean and let out a satisfied sigh. Even though it wasn't that much more, the simple fact that he had gotten more hit the spot. Thanks. You're welcome. You were pleased to see he was perkier, and you went back to eating the rest of your dessert. Another person from Orca got up on stage to make a speech as everyone was nearing the end of the meal. They spoke mostly about the individual project that the organization was working on, and their plans for the near future, as well as encouraging anyone who's interested in considering volunteering. Ko bent forward over the table with his chin balanced on his hand, listening attentively to the words. As you came to a conclusion, everyone gave them a round of applause. Ko caught your eye and smiled. You wonder what would happen now. And then the lights dim. A couple spotlights came on, projecting a water light effect across the room. The guests gushed over the ambiance, and he looked around with wide eyes at the ripples over the walls. DJ had previously been playing some soft mood music in the background. Now that the floor is open for dancing, slowly turning the volume up so it drifted throughout the space. <gasps> oh, I get to dance with Cove! Let's go! I get to dance with him! When he glanced at Cove, his eyebrows had shot up, and he mumbled quietly. Huh. I didn't know there would be dancing. I guess it makes sense now that I think about it. He gave an awkward laugh as he both watched as people rose from their seats. It was clear now that many of the donors were couples. A small crowd had started to form on the dance floor, and the DJ played a romantic song to get everyone started off. Cove let his gaze float over the small sea of guests, and he seemed lost in thought. A serious expression had settled on his face, making his eyebrows dip. Slowly, he turned to you, though there was something cautious in his approach. I Do you mean... Well. I mean, would you want to dance with me? <gasps> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just, I love him so much. He's so fucking cute. He's so cute. <laughs> I'd love to. I was just going to ask you the same thing. I don't really want to dance. I'd love to. His face lit up. You could tell even beneath the dim light. He nodded firmly as he rose from his seat, though you noticed his hands shaking at his sides. You walked out onto the floor together, hesitating a little when you turned and stood face to face. Cove had a hard time meeting your eyes. But he lifted a hand for you to take, unsure what else he was meant to do. He accepted his hand easily and gave him an encouraging smile. It took some doing, but amidst your nervous laughter, you managed to find a comfortable enough position to set a rhythm to the music. It was quite nice after that. Every time your eyes met Cubs, he would look away quickly, but he seemed to be enjoying the dance nonetheless. Eventually, he felt comfortable enough to speak. A lot has happened, huh? He nodded faintly. You weren't sure if he meant just today, this summer, or your entire time knowing each other. But it didn't really matter. It was true either way. Thinking back on the years that you and Cove had been neighbors, it was difficult to even try to reflect on it all at once. I'm so glad. We ended up here. He gave you a soft look and you beamed, knowing that this could also mean many things. From his tone, you were certain he didn't only mean here at this event. It was more than that. There's nowhere else I'd rather be, so am I. I think we have to tell your dad thanks. You couldn't even speak. He chuckled happily at the two of you and the log adventure you'd been on. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. You loved him. Fully and completely you did. Hell yeah, I did! Let's go! The party eventually started to wind down, and at last, it came to an end. When the main lights turned on, you, you blinked against the brightness of them, making sure you saw Cove in your sights. 
One final speaker came up to the podium of the stage, thanking all the guests for coming and wishing everyone a good night. It was bittersweet to see it come to a close. The time with Cove here was precious. At, lo at least the memories could be brought with you. Giving this baseball more luck, you walked together with Cove out of the parking lot. The other guests were doing the same, so they got stuck in a big crowd. Though Cove was so tall, you could always see him, and it was easy enough not to get separated. The parking lot itself was quite big, and even more noticeable now with fewer cars blocking the view. It took a little while to actually locate Cove's car across its expanse. Eventually, he found it, and the two of you bundled inside the vehicle and buckled up. The trip home was quiet, and you both silently reflected back on the experience. The event had been the biggest night of the year for Orca, and now it was all over, just like that. Outside your window, the surroundings soon become familiar, and you find yourselves back in your neighborhood. Cove pulled the car into his driveway and put it in park before letting out a, re a relieved breath. Hmm. Home sweet home. Yeah. After climbing out of the car, you walked slowly down to the road, Cove coming over to stand beside you. You stopped in the middle of the street, right between your house and his, and turned to him, finding him in the process of opening his mouth to speak. Strangely, he clamped his lips together, as though he had suddenly thought better of it. You stayed silent. That was quite a night. Good night, Cove. Thank you for taking me tonight. This is kind of awkward. Thank you for taking me tonight. Thanks for coming with me. He stepped in for a hug. He rubbed his hair playfully. He gave him a friendly nudge. You've had him on the arm. You waved goodbye. Hug. You went forward and wrapped your arms around him, and he returned the gesture squeezing tight. Nice. With the last wispy smile, he left towards his front door. Figuring you shouldn't linger in the street for much longer, you crossed the remainder of the road and did the same. When you reached your house, you pulled out your keys and stuck them in the door, trying your best to be silent about it. Opening the door a crack, you turned back and looked at Ko from over your shoulder. Your eyebrow lifted in surprise when he was doing the same, holding his front door open but waiting for you to go inside before he did. You shared an amused smile before you both stepped into your own house's locking door behind you. You're such fucking dorks, I swear to god. It was quite late, so everyone else was already asleep. As quiet as a mouse, you tiptoed to your bedroom and changed out of your formal clothes into your pajamas. Now that you were finally home, you were exhausted. You brushed your teeth and got ready for bed in the darkness, before crawling under the covers and letting out a heavy breath. It was still strange to think about how it was. The build-up to the event and had felt like so much, now it's so completely behind you. Your mind was busy with rapid yet muddled thoughts as you faded closer and closer to sleep. As unconsciousness creeped up upon you, you felt more content. It was a big deal that there would be more in the future. You could accept where it had been, and you could dream about what you'd get to experience next. And then, you were taken away from the dream right back into reality by a sound. Your eyebrows pinched together, fully unprepared to be a part of the waking world again. The day was over, and it had been an eventful one. But you had heard another noise. It was a tapping. Your eyes flew open. The window. There was a tapping that came from your window. Cove Holden. You slowly forced yourself to get up. You went over to let the guy in. You rushed over to him. Uh, you went over to let the guy in. You extra, you extricated, extra, extricated. I can't fucking read. You extricated yourself from your bed, yawning. You stretched your arms and then made your way to that window. There was another tap right before you arrived. When you pulled it wide open, Cove was indeed there. You had not been surprised to find Cove awkwardly crouched on your window ledge. However, you're taken back to see what he was a little overdressed. Cove hadn't changed out his formal clothes. You also noticed that he was perched clumsily. You didn't know it was because he was trying to keep his fancy clothes clean or if he felt weird about something. His body was too stiff and awkward. Cove smiled sheepishly. Hi, Yui. Hi. Cove, why are you here? How come you're dressed like that? It's nice to see you, Romeo. Have you looked at the clock? It's too late for this. He remained silent. It's nice to see you, Romeo. You moved aside and let him climb inside. He cautiously stepped down by stretching his legs over. Strangely, he didn't use his hands for support. It was clear to you now he was holding something. Oh? What's he holding? When he was safely on his feet, he briefly checked out his clothes, twisting around to see the back of his pants. He caught you looking and shrugged. I mean... I did go home after the event, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to settle down, so I just walked back out. I needed fresh air and time away from everything. He paused for a moment and raised his clasped hands together where you could see them. But then something happened and, well, so I have something I want to show you. Cove grinned like a child and gently unfurled his fingers, not being able to keep you in suspense for even a minute. <gasps> Carefully singing inside was a tiny yellow light. It blinked off and then again, a firefly. <gasps> oh, just like when we were kids! Oh. 
help, you little shit. Duckily moved his hand closer so he could see the creature better. They're back. He closed his eyes, his smile now faintly illuminated by his insect companion. Oh! <laughs> I fucking love him! I love him! I love him! I love him so much! Remember the first time I caught one? I always will. I could barely manage anything because of that neon pink cast I was stuck with all summer. You were still stunned by what was happening, but couldn't help snickering when Cove did. It was thanks to you that I finally held a firefly in my own hand. I was happy to. Honestly, I didn't think I'd see them this year. I don't know why. It's just, they were kind of late, and I guess I've been worrying about a lot of stuff lately. You could tell that the firefly genuinely lifted his spirits. He seemed at peace, and he wanted to share it with you. The fact that his first thought after discovering the fireflies was to come over and celebrate the joy with you made you suddenly feel very cherished. Cove opened his eyes, but he looked away, not meeting yours. It's nice. I think. Even if the fireflies disappear for a while, it doesn't mean they're really gone. They'll come back. I can see them again. He smiled. Technically, fireflies aren't even gone. They're just eggs and larvae. He waited for him to continue. He smiled. And then he looked at the firefly keenly. There's definitely something poetic about them. You felt a warmth in your heart. Cove looked at your face. His smile now fragile. It makes me think about the two of us. We're together. Then we say goodbye, and then we're together again, day after day, year after year, and... Even if our time apart gets longer, that doesn't make it forever. You eat. I'll always be there whenever you want to see me. <laughs> oh, he's so cute! He's so cute! <laughs> he's so cute! He's so cute! He's so cute! Y'all, I'm about to bust! I'm about to bust! You wanted to be with him, there was nothing else you wanted then, and he needed to know. He quietly said his name. Uh... Your heart started to pound. The harsh beat drowned out all the other sounds. You stared at him with a firm gaze. You both had known each other for so long. You were such good friends. You cared about each other so much. Although your feelings had changed, that didn't mean they'd grown from a strong foundation. It was hard to take the step, to become something else, but this was it. You are going to keep your feelings to yourself any longer. Cove's expression shifted into something concerned. His brows were furrowed as he waited for your response. There's something fragile there, I'm sure. Cove, I like you. I like you so much. Cove, I want to be with you. I really do, like, a lot. Cove, would you maybe want to be my boyfriend? You kissed him. We should be a couple already. I'm saving! I'm saving this here! I'm saving this here! It's time, boys! It's happening! This is not a drill! Remain calm! We're doing the confession scene! Cove, would you maybe want to be my boyfriend? Ah! The rapid pulse inside of you seemed to grow even more deafening. Well, that's it. That's what you need to know. What do you think? Cove froze up, face stuck on the shocked expression, but you notice a slight tremble travel through his body as he went dark red. He swallowed hard. Oh, he's so fucking precious! Look at him! Aww! Oh my god. Yui! His eyebrows furrowed, and he openly struggled with words. He made several false starts, unintentional pieces and parts of thoughts. Finally, his voice cracking all the while, he got something out. Really? It's okay? You like me? You want to be with me? Yes, I want to be with you, you idiot! It was like he could barely process it. As if he never re thought reality would let him have this, he starts sniffling. I... I'm just so glad I... He scrubbed at his eyes. His voice went soft then. I thought I was ruining everything. I felt so bad. After we'd been like this for that long, how could I ask to change it? But I couldn't stop myself from wanting to. If this just isn't me, if you feel that way too... His arms falter, causing the firefly to fall off. You're gonna let that shit into my room! God damn it! Forget it! We're breaking up now. You let a bug in my room. He recentered himself, looking into your blue eyes. Yui, I, if I can, I'd like to be your boyfriend. I like it a lot. I can't think of anything I like more. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I know I'm fangirling. A fangirling over a digital boy, but he's so cute. Can you blame me? His lips quirked into a shy smile as he let out a laugh so airy it was nearly a cough. Good, because I want to be your girlfriend. Finally, you blushed and didn't know what to say. You let out a huge sigh of relief. You felt completely stunned that this was even happening. Be 
Good, because I want to be your girlfriend. You hugged him, you kissed him, you covered your face shyly, you jumped into his arms, you beat at him. I'm gonna smooch him! You reached out to him, letting the distance in between the two of you shrink. Within seconds, you were close enough to feel his breath on your face, and you saw the moment it dawned on him. Cove looked nervous but determined, and brought his face to yours. Your noses brushed together, and when he paused, unable to will himself to move further, but you could. You brushed the slight distance that remained and kissed him. Let's go! Cove didn't need further encouragement from there. He kissed you in return, almost urgently. You weren't expecting such further from someone as, some, as hesitant as Cove. To him, if he didn't do it now, if he didn't take this chance, it was as though you'd slip away from him forever. You knew this was right. When you looked into Cove's face again, his smile was sparkling bright, much more so than the firefly he had brought you. His eyes preckled with tears and he sniffled, but you could recognize equal joy taking over him. You both were happy together. You were together and happy. You wiped away his tears, you teared up as well, you squeezed his hand. I'm gonna tear up as well, cause I'm crying right now. You blinked rapidly as tears welled up. You just couldn't stop them. Your joy refused to be contained. He ducked his head with a childish giddiness and peeked at you out of the corner of his eyes. Thanks for waiting for me. Yeah, it's definitely worth the wait. You're worth the wait. It was agonizing. For you, I would have waited forever. I wasn't waiting, you were always there for me. You nodded quietly. You were worth the wait. Yui, um... We're gonna have to tell everybody about this, aren't we? Your moms, my parents, Liz, Terry, Miranda, everyone. I don't think they'll be a surprise. No, they, they called that shit. They planned that shit, dude. He smiled at you with an unabashed preciousness. You figured that even without your history, if anyone caught Cove looking at you like that, it'd be obvious exactly how you felt. His openness of character had some truly delightful benefits. He must have been making an expression equally as affectionate because he began to fluster again. He made some stuttering chuckles and then quieted down, his mouth forcibly staying closed. You both took a moment to process. After 10 years of being together, you were officially a couple now. Hey yo, I got the achievement bloomed romance! Let's go! Cove looked into your eyes with a soft, slight, shy expression. There is hope in his smile. Do you want to go to the hill with me? I bet there's still fireflies. Yeah, let's go. You nodded yes, you shook your head no. Maybe another night? It's too late, I'm tired. Yeah! Cove brightened. He was practically bouncing at the thought of his secret excursion before he suddenly became bashful. So... How should we leave? We could just try the door. We don't have to do the window thing, but maybe that'd bother your family? You both chuckled at how awkward it would be if your moms, or worse, Liz, saw you going on a midnight firefly catching trip. You'd be sure to avoid that. Uh... Let's do the window! Let's do, uh, Romeo and Cinderella! Let's go through the window. Cove nodded in an understanding. You grabbed some shoes and readied yourself for an adventure. You let Cove go first. You stepped back on the ledges as you carefully followed. You shuffled along as soon as you reached the garage. You planned to use the fence from there to reach the ground. Cove climbed down to the fence. He wobbled once, but he made it without an issue. He leaned against the fence and projected hushed words up to where you were waiting. Are you okay? Do you want help? You nodded yes, you shook your head no. I need help. You got the edge and let Cove spot your descent. He grabbed you about halfway down and brought you to rest firmly on the ground. Cove gave you an encouraging smile, but neither of you risked speaking yet. You briskly snuck behind the house and up the old white poppy hill. And Cove was right. The entire hill was lit up, insects twinkling here and there with their pale yellow light. Cove let out a contented sigh, finally able to relax in full. You strode further up the hill to better enjoy the view. You walked along as well, letting yourself be surrounded by the twinkling display. Then, without warning, Cove flopped onto his back. He paid no mind to smacking his formal attire in the grass. He put an arm under his head and stretched the rest of his limbs out. He was clearly quite comfortable in the dirt there. He kept standing, he sat down, he lay down in the grass. I'm gonna lay with him. He sat down first and then fell back. You could see the stars when he looked up at the night sky. Then he snuggled against Cove, you wrapped your arm around Cove, you enjoyed your space. I'm gonna snuggle against him. He was warm in contrast to the chilly ground. Cove cuddled closer in turn, tucking his arm up near your shoulders. Hmm. I wonder if Dad will be mad about the grass stains. He tucked up the collar at his shirt. He didn't sound concerned, just idly curious. Maybe you should figure out how to clean it before he finds out. His smile bent a little and then went silent between you. The only sounds were the rustling of bugs in the breeze and the faraway crashes of the waves on the sea. You couldn't help but reflect on what happened only a brief time earlier. Between this and your room, this almost felt like a different world. Was it even real? What happened between the two of you? 
You could just almost be convinced it wasn't, and that you had never actually stopped dreaming. He stole a glance at Cove. He caught you and blushed. That little reddening reassured you. Cove remembered same as you. What you had was real. You continue watching fireflies. You want to catch some fireflies. Yes, Cove, you wanted to catch some fireflies. You challenge him to a rolling race down the hill. You ask Cove to dance with you. I'm dancing with him again. Hey, Cove, do you feel like dancing? Cove stared at you in shock at the invitation. Understandably, he had not expected that. He felt obligated to try to say more. I just like to. It makes sense to just look at how you're dressed. I just like to. Cove's eyebrows crinkled and he smiled softly. Okay. You got up and brushed off your clothes as best as you could. A pesky blade of grass tried to stay stuck to your leg. Cove did likewise, wiping his hands to, on his pants to clean him off. You faced across at each other, and suddenly the prospect of what you were doing became more real. Cove hesitated a moment as you both tried to say what move to make now. He smiled as he wrapped one arm around your waist and the other across your back. He pulled you closer, near enough that your bodies were touching. And you began to sway together am amid the, flight of the floating lights. Despite the lack of music, you found a rhythm to your movements. Back and forth, step to step, side to side. It was relaxed and free. Your eyes never strayed from one another. For a time, you just existed in the moment, holding each other close and enjoying being together. The hour grew late, and the fireflies mostly dispersed, only until a few stragglers remained. Then, even they blinked out of sight, leaving you alone with Cove and your thoughts. Cove stole a second to release the words that had been fil filling his head during the quiet. I'm so glad. I get to be with you. Felt a great deal of happiness. Cove's expression was completely open, honest, and full of sincerity. He meant every word. No matter how much it didn't seem real yet, it was. It felt as though this was a night that would never end, but you knew it would have to, all too soon. You were only grateful to have been a part of it. These were moments to truly judge you. You'd never let yourself forget them. Oh, that was so fucking cute! <laughs> oh, that was gorgeous!